Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about thermoelectric generators. So let's dive right into it. Well, first you have to understand, most of our energy source uh, we have, be it coal, be it natural gas, be it landfill gas, most of them create heat as their energy output. We don't want heat, we want electricity out of it. So we generally have to convert this one format of energy into another format of energy. And that's the whole point. Like that's why we use uh, either thermoelectric generator, either steam turbine or struggling engine. These are three primary methods of doing uh, that. Basically taking heat and making it into electricity. That's the whole point. Now I have already come, uh, uh, covered steam turbine recently so uh, today we're gonna focus on thermoelectric generator now uh, the problem with the heat to electricity aspect is basically we have too many steps and each step loses a little bit of energy on top of that sometimes it's not even about if, uh, efficiency sometimes it's about like uh, how much headache you are willing to put up with because more steps you have the more things can go wrong for example in a coal power plant you have your normal coal power plant so you generate heat by burning it again burning it a coal power plant is not just like oh coal burn like generally they take coal they put grind it into using ball grinder into dust then they have a uh, like you know blowers that uh, you know atomizes quote and quote basically they make it into a dust and mix it properly then they burn it again that's just to burn it they have to put so much effort just into burning it then they have convert that uh, heat energy into steam energy now that step alone will lose a little bit of energy then you take steam try to turn a turbine so you get uh, basically heat energy into mechanical one and that itself also loses a little bit of energy and again uh, steam turbines are ludicrously complex and then you uh, run a generator that finally converts your uh, mechanical energy into electrical energy so the more steps you have the more bigger your infrastructure more hassles you have more failure points you have more things you have to deal with and again efficiency is also not that great so thermoelectric generator on the other hand is basically you take heat, you give it a temperature delta, ta-da, electricity. That's it. It's almost like magic. Basically, you have heat of a candle, cold side of a ambient air, done. You just get electricity out of it. And this chip is basically boost converter. So voltage is kind of low. So they have they can boost the voltage. So reality is, is basically one step conversion process. And you may have seen people are uh, attracted by this kind of design, even with nuclear energy. If you are familiar with the uh, helium-3 debate, uh, basically gibberish, uh, you must have heard people say helium-3 is a neutronic, aka when it uh, fuses, it does not give out neutron it gives out proton now proton has a charge aka you can send it through electric field and it will directly excite electrons benefit direct basically you have nuclear fusion electricity no steam required no water required higher efficiency awesome that's why people want it but again it's stupid uh, i have already covered that also but you get the point it's like we want energy electricity directly we do not want to have many conversion steps so thermoelectric generator is the closest we have right now that is like okay take your heat give me electricity on the other hand and it requires uh, temperature delta now this is very critical aspect many times people are like okay if we can use candle why not we just cover this with a desert or like you know put them in desert the side effect is hot and cold side it needs both of them it needs delta it does not need uh basically in terms of 100 degrees celsius it needs delta of 100 degrees celsius so you can literally have cold side which is 100 degrees celsius however the uh, hot side could be 200 degrees celsius the system will still work again depending on the semiconductor design uh, but that's the reality it needs delta aka temperature difference the bigger the difference the more voltage you get now again okay. How the heck it's accomplishing this kind of magic where it is like you have a thing and you heat the thing, you have cool the other thing and you get electricity. And when I say cool, I do not mean you have to cool it. You have to just like, you know, uh, create more heat than ambient temperature. So you are burning coal, let's say you get 500 degrees Celsius, ambient air is 50 degrees Celsius. Ta-da, electricity. So how the heck this is happening? Thankfully, many materials like metals have something known as thermoelectric materials uh, properties. Now, in that inside that there are three uh, uh, basically subcategories, sub uh, behavior types. So reality is, if you have two materials, two different conducting materials, be it gold or uh, silver, be it iron or co copper, whatever you have. But you have, if you have two different materials in their junctions, you're gonna have. If you have temperature difference, you're gonna get electrical voltage out of it. That's it. The bigger the delta in temperature, the more voltage you get, basically. And material junction creates that electron flow. So it's not like if you have two parallel materials. Whenever they are touching at that place, it creates the whole thing. So if you have metal A and metal B, and you are heating one side and another side is just the ambient air you're gonna get voltage out of it now if it sounds uh, like you know too magical here's a caveat to this this is the sole reason why you don't see it everywhere it requires something aka generally a metal that has a uh, high electrical conductivity 
okay metals can easily accommodate that we have materials that heck we have superconductor if you want that however this is the problematic aspect it should have low thermal conductivity that's the reason why, why wherever you connect uh, basically two materials different material be it like your power plug or uh, things of that nature they don't act like this thermal attraction simply because even at the beginning stage you can have hot and cold the moment heat travels to the cold side cold side ends up with the equilibrium basically even if it's a hot side is 100 degrees Celsius if the cold side reaches 100 degrees Celsius done electron travel stops so flat out it no longer acts as a generator it's just just a conductor nothing else that's why you need something that allows electron to flow from point a to point b but does not allow basically thermal energy to go from point a to point b so it cannot equalize self equalize that is specifically that's the whole reason you cannot just take uh, basically uh, iron and copper now this technology still is used like you can still take uh, two materials and get a useful energy out of it however it's so low that we generally use that into thermocouples aka uh, thermal sensor basically if you are talking about any sort of thermometer that works on your that's what they have again the energy creation is very little like very very low but again it can be done but as if you can separate the heat energy basically you can say to heat you shall not pass Tada! you have a generator so that's how it works now how do we make such a magical device well semiconductors are our serious here because semiconductors can let the electricity go heck you can even stop it without physically moving it and uh, it will not uh, it's kind of opaque to thermal uh, system basically heat if you have a big semiconductor block send electricity from point a to point b it's like i got this you send the heat out from one point a to point b it will not pass now again when i say not pass it's not like you know it will never uh, allow it to go it's just very inefficient basically electricity can go much faster so utilizing that unique property we instead of using metal we start to use uh, basically semiconductors and two different types of semiconductor n type and p type basically one is positive another is negative now if you are familiar with your transistor this kind of thing would be very easy to understand basically we arrange two of them basically n type and p type as a quote and quote anode and cathode the reason why we are using two different uh, types of material so the properties line up aka electron flow liners we want electron to flow from positive to uh, cold uh, basically cold side to hot side then hot side to hot side then hot side to cold side that's why we need these two architecture because these behave inward of each other so this unit acts as a cell now we arrange hundreds of this depending on your peltier device you can you literally break apart a peltier and see it and you will see hundreds of them arranged in serial because this effect does work but it does create very low voltage it's almost like a solar cell it creates a very little amount of voltage to utilize it in any meaningful way you generally arrange many of them so you can get like around 12 volts out of it or 50 volts depending on your design so this is the cell unit so basically you have cold you have hot side but electron flows in two directions basically first time it goes from cold to hot hot to hot hot to cold because of the n type and p type junctions now this is what creates your thermoelectric effect now again this can be done in reverse also instead of let's say heating uh, uh, effect you can utilize this as a refrigerator where heat can be created uh, out as a heater i mean why would you do that you can simply use normal register or you can use this as a ac air condition basically it will cool below ambient temperature because it acts as a heat pump so electron while traveling they will also pump heat from uh, cold side to hot side so basically you can create temperature delta directly proportional to voltage delta so if they are designed to make let's say 30 uh, degrees Celsius delta as long as the cold size is whatever temperature you have the hot side would be 30 degree uh, basically 30 degree above of that so this is quite amazing because it works in both directions you can literally buy a generator use it as a refrigerator buy a refrigerator use it as a generator however it's not recommended simply because uh, the conductors that we use basically the semiconductors we use them in them they are fine-tuned for that some semiconductors are fine-tuned for high temperature they are not very good at refrigeration others are fine-tuned for that temperature so you can utilize this in whatever way you want it again you bought it from me they do whatever you want it to but again it's generally fine-tuned for that so you will always say people say a peltier cooler or thermoelectric generator so that's the reason for that so semiconductors are fine-tuned for their use case and this is a solid state heat pump instead of compressor and uh, like you know evaporator and condenser you just have one device that magically turns electrical energy into a heat pump where you can uh, basically pump heat from one end to uh, another end basically cool down the cold side heat up the hot side as long as the hot side is uh, you can able to dump heat again if hot side starts to boil the cold side will also start to uh, you know have difficulty
and in certain cases certain semiconductors allows you to be really hot in the hot side aka up to 1000 degrees Celsius. so basically you can have raw car exhaust coming into it and it can convert back it's like i'm not gonna break down at that temperature so that's the construction of it you take a unit basically you have p type and n type and then you create them into cell however the cells are arranged in serial but you thermally it's insulated in parallel so the semiconductor is acting as a thermal barrier so it does not allow heat energy from one side to another side to leak so to say so this is the construction of it basically you have serial cells to maintain the voltage and you have parallel thermal surface to maintain the temperature aspect now what is the problem with it if this is such a magical device and it's just solid state it works everything is real about it what's the problem problem is the efficiency now even though we go through extra hoo-ha where we take cold and turn it into a powder and then burn it then make it into steam all that jazz we still get upwards of 60 percent efficiency if you're really pushing it so here on the uh, even with that many steps we get up to 60 percent here best case scenario is five to eight percent single digit percent that's the reason why you don't see it everywhere that's the reason why it's not like you know the future of electric cars and to uh, for it to work it does not need in terms of joule energy it's not like okay your hot side is a uh, low temperature but it's a very high energy basically it can boil a whole ocean uh, it does not work on that it needs delta delta is a critical problem so if many times uh, kickstarter try to scam people it's like the smartwatch works on thermal electric system now everything on principle works it's like your body is always generally hotter than your surrounding air otherwise you're gonna be dead so if you are in that kind of scenario the problem is a, the system is not that efficient and uh, your surrounding air versus your skin temperature the temperature delta would be barely 10 degrees celsius now in that 10 degrees celsius is barely gonna create one volt let alone one watt so it's not efficient enough to provide electricity that is why like you know those sort of devices does not work you cannot have like you know oh peltier effect device kind of uh, suit that you're wearing and you're walking around in the sun and you're like hey i'm creating a city that's that's not gonna happen it's way too inefficient for that and it needs large delta again if you have large delta then it's amazing but if you do not have large delta it's it's flat out useless uh, and in terms of air conditioning in terms of refrigeration uh, you know removal and all that it's very low coefficient of performance aka it's a pump so you are pumping from one point to another now heat pumps in terms of compressor it can go up to six so what does that mean that means one kilowatt uh, compressor can if done everything correctly can pump six kilowatt of heat so what that means that means the cold side you are losing that kind of, like that cold side would get really 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 cold you are basically exceeding 100 percent efficiency and uh, that is why many uh, european countries who have to deal with cold they want to use that in invert so they will cool down the colder atmosphere on the outside and the heat of the interiors uh, is and they will get more than 100 percent efficiency cop this puppy peltier device at best case scenario to cop that's barely enough for a refrigerator barely but again, it's not that it's 100% useless. There are many scenarios in industrial environment where they have pipes and they have to uh, read out on the pipes, basically the temperature, the pressure and all that jazz. So sometimes thermoelectric system is used if the pipe is hot. The reason for that, if let's say pipe is at around 100 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Celsius and ambient air is like even 50 or 60 degrees Celsius, still enough is there that it can power a low power radio and low power sensors where it's like, you know, it can keep data logging without you needing to worry about, hey, how the heck I'm gonna like, you know, connect a power source and have a data line system this works like it's a common thing you can spot it in many uh, industrial plant and some places especially for a power generation like a mobile tower and all that and if it's in somewhere that nobody is going to repair it or touch it like they want to put it and forget it this sort of generators is very uh, useful in that scenario because it does not have a moving part it does not need greasing lubrication or cooling or anything again cold side has to be cold but that simply means ambient temperature so let's say in siberia you want to run a path uh, basically uh, mobile tower you can just buy these generators they are powered by gas so they do not have uh, too much who have involved in it. just start it forget it about it like just forget about it like it's gonna keep running for like you know 50 20, 60 years as long as you can provide the gas generally they uh, pack up a very huge gas tank so they only have to refill once a year so again it has its unique problem but still has some use case scenario so what we can expect in the future now future uh, remove uh, remove the magical hoo ha aspect of it a bit. In reality, it is the best power source known uh, to man for deep space mission. Uh, best example would be Voyager. Voyager exceeded our sun's influence. Basically, it's outside sun's uh, gravitational, magnetic, and all side of effects. Basically, outside solar boundary, it's outside the solar system, and it needs still power. Again, it has that power simply because it's using thermoelectric generator. Now, the hot side in thermoelectric generator there is plutonium. Now, plutonium, uh, you take plutonium, it creates a lot of gamma rays 
radiation so what do you do you uh, cover it into shield why basically that shield is going to force the gamma radiation to bounce now what that happens when that happens is like when gamma radiation is bouncing around it converts that into infrared in in air really because again mo- molecules are vibrating that converts into heat then that heat is radiated out using infrared again that infrared is heat for thermoelectric generator so you have hot side your plutonium and it will take hundreds of year to decay so you do not have to worry about it and voyager is a like direct testament of how long this puppies last like 40 years it started at 400 watts of power and it still has 200 plus watt power like it started 400 200 like that's like if it was in your car you won't have to worry about like how long is the if the range would be described to you yeah for uh, 30 years keep driving for 30 years after 30 years we gonna change it how many kilometers you don't count kilometers you're like just 30 years man do whatever you want to do so it's a real thing like we been using it it's not very space efficient but it does work it's a real time tested we are using in mars rover we are using in apollo mission it's actually on the moon uh, we are using the mission that is meant to go to pluto i mean we already used it you, that's the reality of it like if we want to uh, do a deep space mission flat out this is the only technology that allows us to do that in any meaningful way then there is a lot of research and development done into combined heat and power because if you are in a scenario where you have to get electricity and the heat out of it why not utilize the heat that is coming out of the exhaust of many uh, power plants and that allows us to get very high efficiency you can get upwards of 90% efficiency that's amazing compared to like you know 60 or in terms of your cars cars are barely 20% efficient so what what about that 80% most of them is turned into either noise or heat most of them is heat but you get the point so what if you can capture that kind of it now again in winter that's not an issue that's what your uh, car radiator does is just circulates the cool and smooth engine casing and you get hot but again what you can do in summer uh, some people uh, postulated that we can utilize peltier effect devices in the engine casing because that gets the hot hottest and you're going to have ambient air even if the ambient air is 100 degrees celsius your engine casing can go go as high as like 500 degrees celsius again not that high but you get the point it's like it generally gets very hot hot so utilizing that you can extract energy and if it's you extract enough energy out of it you do not need a alternator you just going to have a starter motor but you do not need alternator and that even if it only improves your efficiency by few percent that's a lot of energy save especially for long haul trucks some companies have already started to look into it and work into it where they have like you know long haul trucks which has very hot exhaust system that hot exhaust directly goes into a peltier device again it's a hot high temperature but peltier it's not going to work in 200 degrees celsius it needs almost 4000 degrees celsius and again that creates almost 1 kilowatt continuously so imagine it this way like you have 1 kilowatt generator that is working on the waste energy of that you cannot utilize and you can simply shut off the alternator alternator directly drains energy like it's a parasitic load so instead of that you can just utilize your existing that will directly improve your efficiency mileage and everything so many people are looking into that however so far it's all already in the research phase and all that and it's been there for many years so it's being worked on but again uh, it will take time and uh, many uh, theoretical models have already came out where it's like hey what if we change the material itself the semiconductor material itself the special alloy that we utilize uh, if we change that we can achieve higher and higher efficiency and because if we start to reach 50 60% yeah done like this will be the power generator of the future flat out if we reach that kind of efficiency done it does not even reach to, it does not need 90% if it exceeds 50% done game over like every tomic and harry will start using this so a lot of people are working on it let's see what the future uh, unfolds so this was our presentation on thermoelectric generator i hope you liked learn from it in that case please click the like button share it among your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it did not enjoy it i'd urge you to press just like press it twice to show me your success comment and please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you feel and as always thanks for watching